Do you want to know something interesting? When I was much younger, some of my favourite films were the Indiana Jones films. And inside those, generally speaking, Indiana Jones would have to go down some form of cave to retrieve something from the end of it, and then as soon as he picked it up, the entire cave would start trying to kill him. I thought it would be fun to try and recreate that in Minecraft. So, the first thing that we have to do is we need to find a suitable cave, which I actually think I've done around about now. I mean, this looks pretty good. It kind of wraps around like this, and then it pops up onto the surface just like that. Alright, we've got to do some pretty serious modifications. I'm going to first off close up any extra entrances to other caves, and then I'm going to make sure that this place is actually a suitable size for all of the redstone contraptions that I want. And you know what? I think that's actually going to involve extending this thing out way off in this direction, and then creating a really big room at the end. That That's the sort of format that I'm going to be going for here. Which so far is looking pretty good. Now I am going to try my best to make this design actually quite pretty throughout, so we've got this nice viney looking entrance here, and I'm also going to add a few more of these rocks in around the place, and then we have this which is our cave. It takes a little bit of a left turn, then a right turn, and then it goes through here, and then this is where our big room is going to be. But before I do any of that, I'm actually, I'm going to be, <laughs> I, I'm going to be super careful about this, because I want to make sure that all of the cave is fully stone. I don't want any dirt or anything like that, so we're going to be proper perfectionists when it comes to this build, and we're going to make sure that everything, everything's in character. And it really does improve the look of this place. Everything's been removed, this is now looking, yeah, a lot better. Much, much better. Okay, so this is where this is where our build's going to be going. So once again, I've got to clear out a massive space, and I'm going to start work on the kind of temple, I guess, that's going to be going in this zone. I promise you, there is going to be some redstone in this video at some point, but I've just got to finish this place up to make sure that it's all looking cool. Yeah, that's not too bad. So this is where you will run down into and this is where our kind of holy grail is going to be. All right. Yeah, I think I think that's cool. Maybe add in some vines and, and other bits and pieces. But I reckon we are going to create some form of, I guess, golden, almost golden altar down at the bottom here with some steps running up to it. Just a bit like that. And then a chest on the top. And most importantly, we need to be able to take a redstone output from this chest and I think we're actually going to be able to do that through this block right here so we can take the item out that will turn off this comparator which will then allow us to activate all of the booby traps now booby trap number one in typical Indiana Jones fashion is going to be the cave caving in so it's gonna open it up and then lots and lots of things are going to start falling down from the ceiling now the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to stack gravel on top of certain blocks and then when we open up that chest and remove the item a couple seconds later these pistons are going to start retracting in sequence so they're gradually going to start dropping down their gravel all right, here they go. So the roof is gradually opening up. And that is eventually going to drop in all of this gravel. So we've got a few that drop down. I just wanted to make sure that it looked cool. And it really does. This is so, this is bringing back so many memories. I don't normally use command blocks in my builds, but this seems like the perfect sound to be playing as the cave begins to fall in on you. Yeah, <laughs> that definitely that definitely screams impending doom. Okay, let's chuck that into that one. That is not what I wanted to do. So now that we've done all of that gravel falling stuff, I'm actually going to start work on a piston door which is going to close up this room. So this room is going to shut up and then we're going to have some form of puzzle that needs to be solved to fix it. Now, staying on the theme of gravel, I think I'm going to make this one of those pop-up gravel piston doors. So all of these pistons are going to extend, and then they're going to be retractable as well. So the piston door should now be done. That's all working, I believe. We also have this spinny combination lock down at the bottom here. That seems to be working. We've got all of the gravel in place, and I've made a backup of the world. So that means that I can try this out. So here is me being Indiana Jones. We pick this thing up. Okay, we need to turn off the sounds. <laughs> But that's actually not that bad. We need to turn off command, command showing. But that, 
<laughs> it's a very crude kind of Minecrafty version. And also with these things opening, we are getting some extra light coming in, which maybe doesn't look quite so natural. But that was pretty cool. And then if we spin this thing around... That also opens up our door. It actually functions. This thing actually works. <laughs> okay, so we have created... We have created a little hallway, which is... Well, that is that done, I imagine. I can't think of anything else that I'd really want to do. Um, no, I don't think so. So next up is going to be booby traps coming out through these halls here. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a small parkour section. So we're going to clear out of this space. Uh, I'm then going to clear out all of this space. In fact, I'm going to dig a hole underneath here. And then we're going to have a bunch of sticky pistons on the side which are going to retract, breaking a bunch of signs, which in turn is going to cause a bunch of gravel to fall down to the floor into lava, so then we all have to jump over lava. I think that's that's why I'm going here. I have no clue if this is going to work like it does in my brain, uh, but hopefully it does. This is the concept, and if you flick the lever, that actually functions. So all of the signs get broken, and the gravel all falls at once. So I suppose we will have some form of pressure plate system or maybe even trip wires going across here that means that it has to be activated then we'll watch as the gravel falls revealing the parkour stones that we have to jump to however on the redstone side of things there's a handful of interesting things going on first off you may notice all of these pressure plates down at the bottom these aren't actually part of the redstone circuit they're literally just there to break up all of the gravel so that it doesn't block off the lava and just create a gravel lake as opposed to a lava lake because that wouldn't be particularly scary. But then if you pop up to the top here, you may notice that we've got a trip wire. This thing has to activate on the way out and not on the way in. So the way that we're going to do that is we're probably going to hook it up to some form of RS Norlatch. So this is the redstone line which runs out from our chest over there. We're going to run that into another RS Norlatch. And that is going to control if this thing can take a redstone signal through it. So we'll extend out a piston which will allow a redstone signal to pass through a block. And then once the item is removed, that piston will extend across allowing the redstone signal to pass through. I think that made sense. It's all a bit confusing. Having said all that, I would say the most painful part about this process is probably placing in all the signs. <laughs> oh, hold shift and space, place. Hold shift and space, place. This is going to be ingrained into my brain from this point forth. But now that that's all done, we can actually give this thing a go. So I am going to just falsely activate the RS Norlatch, which is going to extend across this piston, which means that this trip wire is now activated. Now, I really hope I've made a backup of the world, because if I haven't, I'm going to have to go through that sign placing again. But if we walk through here... Oh, that was dramatic. That was much better than I was expecting. And then we have the parkour course, which apparently, <laughs> oh, is super easy. But that's fine. It's just all about, it's all about the drama of it. And that was definitely, definitely dramatic. Now it's time to look at my Minecraft world save folder. I sincerely hope I made a copy of this. Thankfully for once in my life, I was actually smart and decided to make one. So now we're going to move on to the next section, which is going to be pop out dispensers. These things are going to be shoot- in fact, there's actually a way in which you can make arrows shoot through walls, and I feel like that would be a really good thing to activate in this section. I wonder if it still works. Let's see if I can get the timings right here. So we hit the button. Yep, that worked straight away. <laughs> I got that perfect straight away. That actually went through that block. So you can see this dispenser is currently covered. We move the block as we shoot the arrow and it travels through the block. Okay, cool. So then we just have a piston up at the top here which pushes the blocks back down and we have ourselves a working system. Doesn't get much simpler than that. So this right here is quite a cool little machine. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we have arrows actually flying out of walls now. Uh, we have a few of these set up, just a few dispensers going along. Just got to do all the redstone for them. I love it. I love this sort of thing. And now this one side is fully hooked up to the RS Norlatch, which is connected up to our chest. So this will now activate <laughs> once, well, I was about to say once our piston door kicks in, but only two of them seem to be working. Not even two of them, only one of them. 
What's going on? And with that, this side is now done as well. So if we activate our hopper once again, you can see that now we have arrows firing in from both sides and also quite the racket going on, but I don't know what's going on with this one. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably the lack of a piston, maybe? That would probably have something to do with it. Okay, so that's that one. This is all looking good. This one over here isn't even connected with redstone. I should really be better. I should really be better at this sort of thing. There we go. That's a little bit more like it. <laughs> this is amazing to watch. Okay, so we've got that. I actually just managed to pop off one of those arrows. That was quite interesting. But yeah, these things are really flying. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, that's an absolute battle zone. I'm going to switch that thing off for the time being. I'm also going to add in some extra rocks and other bits and pieces going through here just to make it a little bit more interesting. My, oh, my, though. I wonder how many arrows get fired in that space of time. Right, things are starting to look a little bit better now. Now that we've added in some extra bits and bobs like these cobblestone walls and all of the stones and everything... It looks pretty cool. This is much more Indiana Jones cave-like, and obviously the arrows are still going to be flying out the walls and things. I am tempted to make some drop in from the ceiling, maybe here and there. Just... Yeah, I guess so. Just shoot some arrows downwards as well, because there clearly there wasn't enough arrows flying through this room already. You know what? Instead of having arrows, I've decided I'm going to have lava drop downs instead. So these things are stood up at the top. When the RS Snorlax triggers, this lava is going to drop down and it's going to stay within these pressure plate areas. So we're just going to have some lava pillars falling through. Right, we are pretty much in one of the later sections in this area. I think this might be the last one. What can we do here? Now, I know that in Indiana Jones, a big boulder fell down and kind of chased him. I cannot think of a way to do it. I really wanted to be able to do it, but I can't think of how I'm going to do that. So instead, I might have like an extra opening that opens up here. And instead of a boulder, we'll have monsters. Monsters will start falling out. So I guess this would be a pretty good cave opening. We'll have like a piston door that opens. And then, in fact, we could blow it out with TNT and then just start shooting mobs out. That... That seems more interesting to me. Now let's see if it actually functions. If we place that block in there and stand on top of this pressure plate. That has spawned some TNT. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that worked perfectly though. We do need to do some protection to the, the sun. The top. So that these guys don't completely get burnt up. But no, that's pretty pretty spectacular. Not bad at all. Okay, let's do the full run. So how about we do this in survival mode then? Right, let's drop down into the cave opening. Everything's looking cool. You can see I have done some extra decorating right here. And we are going to run on through, ready to pick up the Holy Grail. So let's go through here. Everything is plain sailing. Indiana Jones is having a great time right now. But as soon as it is he gets to the Totem of Undying, that's when things begin to change. <laughs> we have been locked in to our area. The room is being shaken around. And yet yeah, we're getting some bits and pieces falling through. We're getting the cave falling in. <laughs> and we have been locked in place. So we need to get the correct combination on this thing. Which will allow us to open up the door to get into the next place. But... We have got to be super careful because the parkour has dropped down. Now, let's see if I can do my, my parkour skills here. We do have a totem of undying. Oh, <laughs> my word. Okay, it's got significantly harder since I added in all of the cobblestone walls around the outside. But we have made it. We have just about made it. Now we have to try and make our way through this place without dying, which is actually, I think, maybe completely impossible. Thankfully, though, I seem to have my Totem of Undying did kick in. Jeez! Everything's kicking off! These guys have kicked in. Oh, my word. <laughs> so the TNT kicked off. All of these guys have spawned. Our Totem of Undying that we just rescued from that cave system has actually been used, which kind of defeats the object of going there to get it because we went in there. And the reason... <laughs> 
<laughs> we almost died, so we had to use the thing that we went in there to get. But this, this has worked perfectly. That was hilariously good fun. Obviously, there will be a world download down in the description if you do want to check it out for yourselves. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. If you did enjoy this video, please drop that like button. If you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.